Why don't we all stand up with Bibles in our hands as we honor the Word of God, as we read it on this wonderful morning, for a morning like this. The Word of God says that Jesus rose from the grave in a glorious fashion and manner. Let us go to the book of Matthew chapter 28 from verse 1 till verse 10. Gospel according to St. Matthew. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Are you all ready this morning? From verse 1. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it and his countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow and the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men but the angel answered and said to the woman do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified he is not here for he is risen as he said come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and indeed he is going before you into Galilee there you will see him behold I have told you so they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word and as they went to tell his disciples behold Jesus met them saying rejoice so they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Thank you. May be seated. Why don't you clap your hands even as you sit down and put your Bibles down unto our God, Jesus Christ, for he is the one who said, Rejoice! And that word stands true even after 2,000 years. Each and every morning as you rise up, as you wake up out of your bed, you've got to make it a point to rejoice. For your King, your God, your Savior, He came from heaven down to earth just for you. And He carried all your sins. And He carried all your sickness and disease and your curse upon Himself. And nailed it to the cross and He rose again victoriously. And because of that you can now be completely free from every sickness and disease and curse. And be cleansed of all sins and to prove that that by faith you receive all of this Jesus rose again and because he's alive and well in a glorious fashion and manner you can rejoice though the devil will try to make it look like things are not going according to your plan but always remember that Jesus is seated on the throne at the right hand of God the Father and he's finished it all at the cross there is nothing in this world that can stop you there is no trouble there is no trouble at all for anybody whatever they think they're going through whatever they think they're facing these are the words of Jesus he's the one who said all you need is faith in God and you will be able to overcome any situation of your life it is a marvelous miracle we know that he rose again but we need to focus and see some of the things that he endured before he died to know what a miracle it is something which is incomparable to the things that have ever happened on earth when someone falls sick and maybe lose their vital signs of life slowly as they start fading away imagine the heartbeat is no more the hearts stopped beating imagine they stop breathing the pupils are dilated the body becomes cold and so those who love them frantically try to take them to a hospital and get them all right 
Imagine at that time as they take them there, it'll take few minutes, maybe half an hour, one hour. After the body has become cold, you take them to any hospital or not, they will say, this person was brought dead. They might try just to please us, to revive and do certain reviving actions. They might try mouth to mouth recitation and might even try to make the heart beat again and give it some shock and they might put some oxygen but if you take someone who's dead to an hospital any hospital even after all these thousands of years of advancement in the medical field no doctor or not can bring them back to life that is if a person has died normally and they're not injured externally and they've not lost any blood if they lost blood in an accident then they will immediately have to close the wounds and then get that same type of blood and inject it into their body and then they hope to have life back if there is internal bleeding they might do a surgery and sometimes if it is too severe they will tell there is no more hope we tried our best but we cannot bring the person to life but you look at Jesus the things that he endured physically it says John chapter 19 was one that Pilate took Jesus and scourged him first look at the list of difficulties that God faced to resurrect such a battered and bruised and beaten body first he was scourged 39 stripes on his back minimum they would have given one more but they say that the person will not live if it exceeds 40 so they just to the point of death they bring that person and then stop there must have been so much of blood loss at that time maybe a liter or even more than that and it's described even in the bible you'll see in psalms 129 verse 3 it says the plowers plowed my back and they made their furrows long like as if a field which is got to be prepared for sowing the seed they dig it deep and loosen the soil so that they can plant the seed in the same fashion and manner it says the plowers plowed my back they didn't just beat lightly ripped it stripped shreds of skin and flesh would have been hanging the ribs and the back would have been completely exposed that's how he was scourged and then they did not enthrone him but i like to say this word they enthroned him they twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head and it says in matthew chapter 27 verse 30 that they took the reed that they'd given in his hand to mock him and they beat him on the head to ensure that those thorns pierced his head then maybe even pierced his eyes and he would have been bleeding on his head and they mocked him Luke 22 30, 63 says now the men who held Jesus mocked him they said hail king of the Jews and when they were taking him to Herod sent by Pilate Herod and the men of war treated him with contempt and mocked him and to make fun of him is how they gave him this gorgeous robe for which they later fought the soldiers who would get it you can say oh, why does that matter I don't know if you've been mocked in such a fashion and manner group of people gathering up around you and when you're bleeding and you're in pain and suffering and they mock you and they literally try to break your resolve and break your mind and your heart people who are mentally broken will find it very difficult to regain their composure even Two days ago, I read about how a man working in a company heard something from the boss. He came back home, he committed suicide just because his boss told him something. So, just beating and physical injury is not the only thing that makes it difficult for a person to live. Words, especially mocking, can make it difficult for a person to live. Even if you keep them alive, they will not have the will and the desire to continue to live. 
they'll be broken down they'll want to lock themselves up and they will not want to fulfill the plan and call of God that God has over their life not only did they mock him it says they arrested him they laid hands on him and took him all these affect a person's will affect a person's emotion a person's mental state I don't think anyone here has been arrested imagine they come group of police to your house they come in jeeps and then they take you from your house and put you in the jeep and take you it was literally like that hundreds of them came and arrested Jesus and took him like as he was a common criminal I don't know if you'll go back to your house after that just imagine if maybe a hundred cops more the number the terrible it will be they'll think you are a terrorist or they'll wonder what did this brother do what this person did you might not able to go back to that same street and live in that same house you might have to shift your house after that because all the neighbors will wonder what's happened what have you done even if you tell them I didn't do anything they were not going to believe you they'll think you must have done something they arrested him and not in a light fashion and manner they bound him I've seen some of the people who they found fault with and there are many police constables who walk around them as they take them from one place to another for interrogation or for any other purpose some of them are just walking free but here it says in Matthew 27 verse 2 that they bound him it's like they put handcuffs I'm sure that'll be even more humiliating if they come and put handcuffs on you I don't think anyone here has got handcuffs imagine police catch you and put handcuffs and take you on the road all that will affect your mind and they struck him the Bible says they blindfolded him and struck him on the face John 19:3 says they struck him with the their hands not only did they beat him they slapped him on the face with their hands that definitely would cause a lot of pain and swelling and bleeding and maybe he was beating even inside his mouth because of the force with which they hit him and they blasphemed him Luke 22 verse 65 says and many other things they blasphemously spoke against him why I'm telling all this is when he rose again he was completely free from all of this if someone was treated like this and they died and you went and brought them back to life even after they come back to life they'll be broken mentally and emotionally they will not be able to come out and meet people they'll be really hurt and affected it'll take a long time for them to get healed some of them don't even get healed they blasphemed him and the other thing they did is they despised him it says they spat in his face that really humiliates someone you know they just look at you and spit on the floor that is more than enough but imagine someone spitting on your face Jesus went through all of that instead of you instead of me instead of everyone on earth they betrayed him those who are close to him one who was supposed to be an apostle Judas and how did he betray him he betrayed him with a kiss that Jesus asked Judas are you betraying the son of man with a kiss that makes it even more painful they denied that he and they had a relationship and they knew each other says that Peter began to curse and swear saying I do not know the man imagine they catch you and then you think your friend will come and save you and they ask your friend I thought you know this person and they tell openly I do not know him I have nothing to do with him nothing to do with her we have no connection at all and they shake their hands off you three times he denied saying I do not know him cursing and swearing and then the Lord looked at Peter 
definitely he was a human being who would have been hurt but he did not let that hurt overcome him then he was wrongly sentenced and judged the judge who was there said i found no reason for death in him then in matthew 27 24 he says i'm innocent of the blood of this just person many people get really hurt when someone accuses them and tells that they've done something wrong when they've not done something deserving of any punishment or any condemnation or ridicule here he was taken to court and the judge says i find no reason for death in him and he's a just person but they still gave up on him and allowed him to be crucified he was wrongly sentenced wrongly judged and he was a burdened man they placed the cross on him on his beaten back he had to carry it all of this would humiliate a person even more and they finally crucified him not by himself but in the midst of two criminals one on the right and the other on the left again another way of making him feel bad the 14 we see that he's a forsaken man they all forsook him not one stood with him all of them forsake forsook him and fled not only did all his close companions and friends those who ate with him and had fellowship with him who professed their love to him fled finally hanging on the cross he cries out my god my god why have you forsaken me we'll be okay if the people of the world forsake us we always say to each other as christians even if all of the people in the world have forgotten you and forsaken you god loves you and that is the truth jesus himself said lo i am with you always even to the end of the age and his word is true he's always there with us but for jesus christ himself there came a point he knew there was a separation because he took sin upon himself god the father cannot connect with anybody who has sin he cannot have a relationship with someone who has sin in their life and jesus took your sin he took my sin and therefore that brought in the separation between him and his father which had never taken place so much so that he cried out for all these other things he hardly spoke a word he was even prophesied saying like a lamb before its shearers he opened not his mouth but now when the separation between him and god the father took place he just couldn't bear it that's the time he cried out saying my god my god why have you forsaken me and even after he died they would not leave him alone the soldiers pierced his side with a spear that immediately blood and water came out there was a puncture in his heart he was nailed to the cross with his hands and his feet his back was literally plowed beaten all over his face bleeding right from the head right down to the sole of the feet such a body to be resurrected is almost impossible imagine the number of surgeries that would have to be performed to seal up all the wounds it may not even be possible at that time and he still bears the scars in his hands and his feet and even in his side that is a amazing miracle imagine you get punctured with a bullet or get thrust in with a spear and there's a hole in your side right down to your heart and they take you to the hospital and you tell the chief surgeon i want to have the scar so do not close it up let it be open like this but i still want to be alive i still don't want to bleed i don't think there's any surgery that is available where they can leave the wound to be open like that and seal it inside and cover it up and still keep the person alive i'm trying to make you understand what a big miracle it was to be resurrected when a body was treated like this holes all over his body pierced and 
ripped apart not only was his body pierced that even after they put a dead body in the tomb they sealed and guarded the tomb you know if he had had a group of disciples and apostles who believe that he'll rise again on the third day if they had come there they would have been arrested immediately and even if he had risen up inside the tomb there was such a large stone that they would have needed many men from outside to roll it it would have been impossible for him to roll it from inside look at the number of difficulties that were there for him to even come out of the tomb you might face such difficulties in your life where you think it is impossible but god sent an angel because even if the apostles had come they would have been immediately arrested and they would have not been able to roll the stone away and again an impossible situation but god sent an angel who rolled it if they think they finished your life and they seal you inside a tomb and make it impossible i tell you your god is more than able even if all the people fail he'll even send an angel to get you released these were some of the physical difficulties not all of it but even more crushing even more horrific was the sins of the world that he carried he who knew no knew no sin was made to be sin for us bible says in first peter 2:24 he himself bore our sins in his own body in his body he bore the sins of all the people of the world when you've done something wrong you feel the pressures of guilt and the word of god is true the wages of sin is death immediately there is a decay that starts a corruption that starts that's how adam and eve would not be able to live they were not supposed to die at all they were supposed to live and continue living forever and ever with god but because of sin the life span was reduced and here the sins of the world were placed on him it definitely has an effect on the physical body a body crushed not just with physical torture and physical wounds but a spiritual and a sin pressure that would have crushed it and not only was it the sins of the world he became a cursed man he took the curse of all the bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue god told abraham i'll bless those who bless you and those who curse you they will be cursed curse has an effect the modern day scientific world might not believe in that or accept that but there's still blessing when god blesses you will be blessed it does not matter and when the people of god and even the people of the world bless you their words of blessing will have a wonderful positive effect and the same way curse also has an effect it says jesus christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us for it is a curse it is everyone who hangs on a tree he was so cursed and under such pressure of sin that isaiah chapter 53 was 3 it says that he was an afflicted man smitten by god beaten by god not just was he beaten by men he was rejected by god sent away literally beaten by god and it says and we hid as it were our faces from him the effect of sin on his face on his body would have been terrible you have not looked nice at all and all the sickness imagine every sickness on the world placed on him Isaiah 53 5 says he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities and by his stripes we are healed so all the sickness and disease was placed on him he would have been like the most sickest man on earth the one would have the most disease on earth that's how he would have looked why I'm sharing all of that is when God could raise up such a body and give it back to life oh what is your problem what is your trouble what is your sickness what is your disease what is the 
rejection that you are facing what is the difficulty that you are facing none of that is too difficult for your god he is a god who says i lay down my life and i take it up again how is he able to lay down his life and take it up because he has the power to be resurrected he says in john chapter 10 verse 10 that the thief comes to steal to kill and to destroy but i've come that i might you might have life and life more abundantly when the enemy comes in into your life to steal to kill destroy do not worry jesus if you call on him will come and he will give you life an abundant life hallelujah that's why it says in john chapter 10 verse 18 I have power to lay my life down and I have power to take it up again. This word power is exousia which means not just power but power authority and also the right to pick up the body again. And each and every one of you have the same power in your life. He was commanded by God the Father to be resurrected. God sent him they planned this even before the foundation of the world God the father and God the son and the holy spirit had a meeting and they said this is what man would do when we create man in our image and our likeness and give them the power and the ability to choose and do whatever they want then they will reject us and then we will have to do this and Jesus you would have to go down and die for the sins of all and and when they discussed that god the father commanded him saying that you will pick up your body and i will give you the power for that john 10 18 says this command i have received from my father what is the command that i might have power to lay down my life and i might have power to take it up again he got this as a command not to give up after that because he was rejected by mankind rejected by his own people who would in a normal mind want to come back to life and live for such a people if you went to a house with all your family and relatives all of them got together and they killed you crucified you and buried you and then god the father gave you the opportunity to come back to life would you want to come back to life many give up immediately and say i don't want to live let me die what is the use of living who do i want to live for there is no one i want to live for but jesus fulfilled the plan of god each and every one of you have a plan in your life and he fulfilled the command of god we have no right to take our life your life is precious it was given as a gift to you you got to fulfill god's plan and purpose in your life even if no one in the world loves you the command of god the father is for you to live just as he told jesus he commanded him saying pick up your body again though they will reject you though they will crush you though they will kill you you still have to rise again and you still have to go and meet those disciples who denied you you still have to go and meet those apostles who did not even believe in you forsook you and left you go meet them again and again build back their life and again strengthen them again put them on the right path and recommission them and speak nicely to them and send them into the world to preach the gospel to the others who also didn't seem to have any care about him that's why he says in john 14:31 As the father gave me commandment so I do. And he says in John 5:21 as the father raises the dead and gives life to them even so the son gives life to those he will. Just as God the father gave him life Jesus Christ will give you the life. He is the shepherd who will lead you. It does not matter what path you're going through what valley you're going through His rod and your staff will comfort you and he will prepare for you a wonderful place 
on the mountain top this same command that god the father gave jesus christ exists for each and every one of you don't ever disregard your life just because someone says something or someone forgets you and someone rejects you don't immediately think oh what is the use of me living on this earth who's there for me no one truly loves me don't go down that path if there's anyone who could have gone down that path it was jesus but he kept the commandment of god the father but the same command exists for you god the father will raise up first corinthians 6 14 says and god both raised up the lord and will also raise us up by his power he's given his word and he commanded the 12 and sent them out saying heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons speak to the person behind you next to you in front of you and say live for jesus do not give up let death have no place in your life live your life till that last day till the last hour till the last moment according to the will and plan of god you have no right to take your own life for god is the one who's given it this body belongs to him this life belongs to him so live and god will turn things around amen those who misunderstood you those who rejected you those who spoke bad about you they all did it under a negative influence they were all under pressure you've got to be like god forgive and forget and accept them and move on for only then you will be forgiven forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us forgive your children forgive your parents forgive your siblings your brother and your sister do not hold a grudge forgive your relatives don't always hold that thought saying oh they've done this she's done this let the love of god fill your heart and your life and your mind that is very central very important this is the command of god the father that you might live that same authority that jesus has god has given it to you luke chapter 9 verse 1 it says and he called the 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons you have that authority that jesus had to pick up the body you have that authority over your own body when the enemy comes and strikes you you might not die like jesus you might still be alive but still you have the authority to speak into your own life for you to expect the miracles of god and the healing of god to take place in your life and you also have the same right for when you accepted the lord jesus christ and you're born into the kingdom it says in the bible john chapter 1 verse 12 that he gave right to become the children of god to those who believe in his name to as many as many as received him you have rights in the kingdom of god you have the right to live your life no one has the right to stop you from living do not let their words stop you from living god will make a way for you he'll bring you through that terrible difficult situation this is very important because the enemy and the devil is the accuser of the brother and he uses the mouth of many people to hurt those who follow the lord and they hurt so much i can tell you of so many people even in our church you might not know there would have been a time when they would have finished their life many but just at the moment at the right time something happened they escaped it was an amazing plan of god why did they want to end their life because of the people in their life because of their family because of others who spoke and did certain things you need to keep the commandment of god to know that you have the authority and the right to live your life do not listen to anyone's words and give up hope give up your desire to live 
and you have the same power not just the right not just the authority or oh, you have the Holy Spirit Romans 8 11 says and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through a spirit who dwells in you he will give you that life that's why you got to worship God and you got to move in the spirit and not quench the spirit that's why when you come here you'll have a slight nudge to sing and you're going to open your mouth and sing you come and just stand and look at people and think about this think about that then you're not being open to the leading of the Holy Spirit you got to be able to stand up to give God glory and honor and then after that open your mouth and sing a little bit and then sing louder and louder and as you yield and let the Holy Spirit lead you on then he'll say okay lift up your hands and so you do not think about anybody else and lift up both your hands and as you keep doing this and when I say shout you I don't just say because I want to shout it is because of what I hear I say and when you shout at that time you will have the breakthrough that yoke will be broken the chain and the shackle will fall off you'll enter into a new life you'll receive the victory of God because you listen to the Holy Spirit and you will be delivered and as you go step by step it's like going to the river of God first your ankle deep then you go up to your knees then you go up to your waist and then it is such a deep river that you have to swim in it and then you'll be completely transformed but you got to listen to the Holy Spirit you cannot be stuck up you cannot hold back and just stand and watch oh yes we are all human beings you want to find fault you'll always find fault but know that God didn't send you as a judge to the house of God you can come and point fingers here and there that person is doing this person is doing that this is not right that is not right you are not been sent by God to look at all of that you come here to worship Jesus Christ that's why you have to sometimes close your eyes and just forget everyone else everything else and just focus on Jesus and open your mouths and sing and praise him and and as you move and as you dance and as you jump as you spin around there will be deliverance in your life so let the Holy Spirit lead you and then you will experience the power of God in your life you need to have that spirit of wisdom which gives the revelation and the knowledge of him the understanding to be enlightened to know the hope of his calling and the riches of his glory and the inheritance the exceeding greatness of his power towards you who believe according to the word king of his mighty power which worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and that same power that works in you for he's a God who gave power and the same works of Christ you will do he was able to pick himself up you will be able to pick yourself up sometimes and no one else is there it says most assuredly I say to you he believes in me the works that I do he will do also and greater works than these he will do if Jesus rose from the dead none of you here are dead a little problem a little difficulty has affected you don't say oh I cannot get up that same power the same Holy Spirit is there the same life of works will lead you and that will be part of your life not just one instance it says in John chapter 5 verse 19 most socially I say to you the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do for whatever he does the son also does in like manner and then he says for we are his workmanship Ephesians 2.10 Created in Christ for good works God is working in you You are his masterpiece That you should walk in them Not just have one little miracle all through your life But that you should walk in it Each and every day things happening in your life In a miraculous way For nothing is too hard for the Lord Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Only few people believe that. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Even now some of you would think of sleeping. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? 
The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Amen. For with God all things are possible and nothing will be impossible for a modern. Clap your hands and stand up this morning. Let that power which resurrected Jesus Christ keep working in your life. Say unto the Lord, O oh Lord Jesus, even as you rose from the dead, you said, O oh Lord, that same work that even we would do, that same Holy Spirit is there, that same power to resurrect is there. That what do we go through, not just right now in this season, not just in this day, but all through our life, that we will allow you to lead and guide us, that your power would keep flowing through us, that nothing and no one will crush us and remove any desire to live, but that we will want to live to you and for you. For your abundant life has been given to us through your word. We have written it and given it to us, Lord Jesus. And we accept it and receive it. Do you accept it and receive the word of Jesus Christ? That he has come to give you life. Say, I will live and not die. And declare the glory of God. And the power of God and the greatness of God hallelujah oh let's clap our hands and give God glory tell him oh Lord I give you all the glory give you all the honor give you all the power give you all the praise God bless you see you all outside